Hey folks, Phil Zito here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking through Ohm's Law. So we've talked through a lot of concepts so far in the BAS bootcamp. We've talked about what a BAS is, we've talked about inputs and outputs, and yesterday we talked about transformers and circuits. Today we're going to talk about just the basics of voltage, current, and resistance. So there's this interrelationship between voltage, current, and resistance that exists and it's called Ohm's law and you can see the formula right here and this is really important as a BAS professional especially when we are dealing with different kind of problems out in the field for example if we have a sensor that is pegged at a negative value or pegged at a high-end positive value that could indicate shorts that could indicate breaks in wire there could be loss of continuity where we have essentially full resistance and there's all these concepts that from a troubleshooting perspective and an installation perspective relate to these things right here. So let's kind of look at just a basic circuit real quick. We're going to draw out a controller and uh, I know that inputs are usually on the left, but just because I have space on the left, we're going to have our output on the left. Okay, and if we look at just a basic circuit here, with a coil, right? And that coil gets energized. Well, the coil is going to get energized by voltage, right? We're gonna have 24 volts or whatever um, coming out of the controller, energizing the coil. And that's gonna be our voltage. Now, if there was a break in the line here, right? If there was a break in the circuit, if I can get the eraser here, that would increase resistance. What would happen here is this resistance would increase almost to an infinite, actually to an infinite level, because obviously there's a lot of resistance of the flow of electricity because there's a break in the line. It can't complete the circuit. Now, let's take that basic concept of increased resistance and let's talk about something that a lot of you are probably fairly familiar with. And it's this concept of electrical strip heat. So I'm gonna kind of erase this real quick. And this is gonna help us illustrate. So we've illustrated voltage, right? We've illustrated how voltage flows across the wire. We've talked about resistance. Now we're gonna talk about current, which current is basically a buildup of energy. If you think of the electricity, right? And it's trying to flow through this wire from point one to point two and the electricity is trying to flow through and then it hits something it hits resistance well in the case of an electrical coil right um we'll often see it kind of indicated like this and what will happen is this this voltage is going to hit this resistance right here and that's going to create current um, it's going to create buildup it's going to create heat and that's how our electrical heat works is we supply, you know, uh, 120, 277, whatever voltage we're supplying. And as that volt voltage goes from hot to common to complete a circuit, then what happens is this resistance in the form of the electrical coil uh, builds, it, it basically slows down this electrical flow and that electrons, uh, I may be saying this wrong, uh, it's early in the morning, but uh, basically the electrons get blocked up by the resistance and that creates current in the form of I, in the, in the form of amps, and that creates heat. So our common measurements for voltage and for current and for resistance our volts, amps, and ohms, which I, for the life of me, always struggle to draw that symbol. But uh, actually, why am I even trying to draw that? We're just going to write it out. My um, artwork skills, as you are going to become quite uh, aware of over the past uh, next several weeks, it seems, are not the best. Uh, for some reason, the art gene did not uh, get transferred to me. But as we can see, volts is our unit of measurement for voltage. Amps is our unit of measurement for amperage or current. 
and ohms is our measurement for resistance. Okay, so we've talked through voltage, we've talked through breaks in lines causing infinite resistance, we've talked through how we can introduce resistance um, it to resist the flow of electricity in order to create heat and amperage. Now let's start to talk about kind of some of our most common input types and how they relate to these concepts of Ohm's law and voltage and all that jazz. So our most basic type, right, is going to be either a RTD or a thermistor. Now, I'm not going to get into the difference between RTDs and thermistors in today's video, but basically what happens is we have a controller, and once again, I know I'm switching where the inputs go. The inputs typically go on the left, and now I'm going to be putting them on the right, but uh, we have a resistive sensor, right? We have our temp sensor. And what will typically happen is five volts DC positive will flow across this wire and the controller will sense the resistance and it will have a resistance table um, typically known as a like a 10K type two table or a 1K RTD table, et cetera. But it'll have a resistance table and then based on the ohms that is sensed, that is basically paired up against either a Fahrenheit or Celsius value. So that's how controllers work, is inside the controller we would select the appropriate table. Now for voltage, what will typically happen is, let's say we have a remote, uh, or not remote humidity, a relative humidity sensor. Uh, do not do videos before really letting your coffee kick in, just a side note. But we have a relative humidity sensor, and that is going to be volts DC. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to source our uh, volts DC, typically, uh, or volts AC or DC to the sensor from either our transformer or from the controller. And that's going to go here. And then on the actual sensor itself, we're going to have a hot and a common, and it's polarity sensitive. More on that tomorrow. And that's going to feed back to our controller. And then uh, for a amperage, for a current, typically milliamps, we're going to have pretty much the exact same setup. We're going to have a transformer feeding to the sensor, right? And we're going to have a wire coming back to the controller. And uh, it's, it'll be wired a little bit different. I'm probably going to do milliamps in a separate video just because of the wiring being a little different. But the key things I want you to take away from today's video, because I know there was a, a lot of drawing on it, key things I want you to take away are the relationship between volts, current, and resistance. Right, we can see if current or resistance increases, we're gonna have an increase in volts. And if they decrease, we're gonna have a decrease in volts. So we can see how that kind of calculation works. We understand how um, the circuit, how it's wired up is going to affect the relationship between voltage, resistance, and current. And, and uh, we also understand, right, that there are three input types. And we talked about how these input types feed back to the controller. We talked about the resistive one uses typically a five volts DC positive. So that's positive polarity from the controller in order to sense resistance. And then we talked about how our volts DC and our amperage milliamps typically are going to use a transformer source to power the sensor and then are going to feed wires back to the controller. So pretty basic today. We're going to get into more specifics of wiring all this up as the videos continue. Uh, but for right now, this should give you a pretty good primer on how all this works. As always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Love to answer them for you. Thanks a ton. Take care.